In this video, we're going to be going over applications and systems of equations. Well, really, I don't know if we call it applications. It's, it's trying to write the equations for the systems. So first off, it says Tom has 10 coins in his pocket. Some are nickels and some are dimes. The total value of the coins are 85 cents. How many of each type does he have? The first thing that we need to do is define our variables. That means we need to tell what it is we're talking about. And in my problem here, we're talking about nickels and dimes. And we need to define what letters we're going to use for what um, words. You can use X and Y, but a lot of times it's easier to say N equals the number of nickels. D equals the number of dimes. These are what I'm going to use for my equations. Now, another thing is I want to point out nickels are 0 0.05. Dimes are 0 0.10. One of the most common mistakes is that people write a nickel as 0.5. Well, that's not right because that is 50 cents. So let's get that out of there. Okay. The first equation is how many coins does he have? Well, he has nickels plus dimes, and that equals 10. The total value of them, when you do the value, you have to add in the dollar amounts. So I have 0 0.05 times the nickels plus 0 0.10 times the dimes, and that equals 85 cents. There's my system. Now from here, if I asked you what would be the best way to solve it, would, be, would you use graphing, substitution, or linear combination. Remember in graphing it's when they're both y equals. Substitution, one of them is in standard form and the other one is in x equals or y equals. Linear combination is when they are both in standard form. In this case they're both in standard form so it would be easier to do linear combination. We'll come back to solving in a little bit. The next one, why don't you pause the video and come back and see how you do. In this one, what are the things that we're talking about? We're talking about quarters and dimes. So I'm going to have Q equals the number of quarters. D equals the number of dimes. Now again, I like to always put my dollar amounts with it. Quarters are 0.25 and dimes are 0 0.10. So my first equation, how many coins do I have? I'm going to take the quarters plus the dimes and that equals 20. Now put the dollar amounts with it. 0.25 times the quarters plus 0 0.10 times the dimes equals three dollars and thirty five cents. Now again, how would you solve this? Substitution, linear combination, or graphing? They're both in standard form. I would solve it by linear combination by multiplying my top equation by something. Here's the next one. Pause the video and come back and see how you do. In this case, Joe is getting CDs and DVDs. He bought a total of 12 items. CDs were 10 and DVDs were 6. He spent $100. How many of each did he buy? Well, I'm going to use C equals the number of CDs. D equals the number of DVDs. Well, he bought 12 items. So that means the CDs plus the DVDs equals 12. You have to put the dollar amounts in there. I guess I forgot to do that. So the CDs were $10 and the DVDs were 6. So you'll take $10 times the CDs plus $6 times the DVDs and that equals $100. Again, how would you solve this? What would If you had to choose substitution, linear combination, or graphing? They are both in standard form, so you would do linear combination or elimination, whichever you want to call it. Number four, 
pause the video, see how you do. I'm sorry, pause the video, try and do the problem, and come back and see how you do. Claire was thinking of two numbers, a smaller, a larger one and a smaller one. The sum of the two numbers is 48. When the smaller is subtracted from the larger, the answer was 24. Well, first off, actually, I'm, you could use S and L. I'm going to actually do X. Well, no, maybe we'll do S and L. Um, I'll, let's see, let's go the L for the larger number equals larger number. S equals smaller number. Or you could use X and Y. A lot of times I use X and Y. It says that the sum of the two numbers is 48. Sum is addition. Large number plus small number equals 48. Now the next one says, the next sentence says, the smaller number was subtracted from the larger. The answer was 24. So when I took the larger and I subtracted the smaller from it, it is 24. Now, again, how would you solve this? What would be the easiest way? And yes, it would be linear combination because both of them are in standard form. Number five, pause the video, try and um, answer the questions, and come back and see how you did. In this case, we are talking about trucks and cars. So I'm going to have T equal the number of trucks. and C equal the number of cars. It said they bought 10 vehicles. So the trucks plus the cars equals 10. Don't forget to put the dollar amounts with it. The trucks are $14,000 and the cars are 9,000. So I have 14,000 times the truck plus 9,000 times the cars, and that equals 120,000. Number six, pause the video, write up your equations, and come back and see how you did. In this problem, you're talking about movie tickets for adults and children. I'm going to have adult, or A for the adult tickets. And C for the ch children, the child tickets. So in this, it says that 175 tickets were sold. Adult plus the child tickets equals a 175. Sorry, 175. The adult tickets are six dollars, and the child tickets are two dollars. Six times the adult plus 2 times the child equals 750. There's your two equations, and you can use a linear combination in order to solve it. Number 7, pause the video and come back and see how you did. Sally knows that the perimeter of the rectangle is 10 inches. She also knows the length is 3 times the width. Find the length and width. So defining my variables, I'm going to have L equal the length and W equal the width. She knows the perimeter is 10 inches. Now, remember, perimeter of a rectangle, we add up all the sides, but the formula they like to use, use is 2L plus 2W. So I'm going to have 2L plus 2W equals 10. The second sentence, it says she knows that the length is three times the width. Now in this case, what would be the west the west? What would be the best way to solve it? Graphing, linear combination, or substitution? In this case, it would be substitution. Because I could take this, the 3W, and plug it in here for L. Again, in another part of a video and another links we'll go over how to solve it. But this is just making sure you can identify it. Number eight, pause that video, try and write your equations, and come back and see how you did. In this case, Mario bought Cokes and popcorn, so I'm going to have C equal the number of Cokes 
and P equal the number of popcorn. Well, it says, let's see, the Cokes are $1.50. Let me go ahead and put that in here, $1.50. And the popcorn is $3. It says he purchased eight items. So the Cokes plus the popcorn equals eight. Now let's put the dollar amounts. $1.50 times the Cokes plus $3 times the popcorn equals $12. Now how would you solve this? Linear combination, substitution, or graphing? They're both in standard form, so um, linear combination would be the best for this one. Number nine, pause that video, come back and see how you do. We have nine, 10, and 11, so we have three more problems. Marble slab, they're selling Sundays and banana splits. So let's see, I've got S equals the Sundays. And those are $2. And then I have B for banana splits. And those are $3. Well, it says that on a hot day, the shop sold eight more Sundays than banana splits. Eight more Sundays than banana splits. Eight more Sundays. Well, let's see. Eight more Sundays than banana splits. Which one is there are they selling the most of? Sundays. So you have the Sundays equal eight more banana splits. So I'm going to have the banana splits plus eight. You can write it like this. You could, there's other right ways you could write it as well. Um, then we find the price or the amount that they make is 160 or 156. So I have $2 times the Sundays plus $3 times the banana splits equals 156. Number 10, pause that problem, uh, pause that video and come back and see how you do. They have a math test. We're going to have X is going to be the two-point problems, and Y is going to be the three-point problems. The test is worth 60 points total, and there's 25 problems on the test. So the two-point problems plus the three-point problems. Oops, I don't want the three. I want the Y. Just the problems itself is 25. Now add the values of the, po the problems. Two times the two-point plus three times the three-point problems gives you a total of 60 problems on the test. Number 11. Pause the video and find this out. This is the last one. The length of the rectangle is equal to double the width. Find the length and width of a rectangle with a perimeter of 76. I'm going to have L equals the length and W equals the width. So it says the length is equal to double the width. Double means times 2. Then it says the perimeter is 76, so I have 2L plus 2W equals 76. Now looking at this, what's the best way to solve it? Linear combination, graphing, or substitution? See that one of them is L equals? You'll take this and substitute it in here for L, so substitution is the best way to solve this problem.